All right. Thank you all for coming today. Um, my name is Bobby White. I am the wellness coordinator at Oglala Lakota College. Um, before we get started, I would like to ask you all to please put in the chat where you're from. So what state, what area, um, whatever you're comfortable sharing, where, where are you from? Awesome, thank you. Welcome. Awesome, thank you guys. Very cool. All right, so to get started for the day, my name is Bobby. I'm the wellness coordinator at Oglala Lakota College. I provide mental health services counseling for students of the OLC community and staff of the OLC community. Um, so I provide that. Um, before we jump into the presentation slide portion, um, we will go to a short activity. Feel free to follow along. Um, there is audio to it. Um, the, the, initiate, the start of it um, does start off kind of loud, so just be, be aware for that. Um, but please follow along to, to the video. So sitting comfortably, just taking a big deep breath in through the nose, out through the mouth. As you breathe in, noticing how the body expands. As you breathe out, just watching the body soften as you gently close the eyes. And rather than the mind leading the breath, allow the breath to lead the mind. Notice the sensation of the breath. Notice it where you feel it in the body. If you need to, you can just gently place your hand on the stomach. And just following that rising and falling sensation. Nothing else to do. Allowing thoughts to come and go. And when you're ready, just gently opening the eyes again. All right, so thank you for following along with that. We will go over to my presentation slides now. So, like I said, my name is Bobby White. I'm the Okijupi Wakiapi Wellness Coordinator at Oglala Lakota College. Um, today, we will be addressing being a good relative and what that looks like in the form of self-care. Okay, so if you have a paper and a pencil close by, um, if not, please try to create a list in your mind. Um, what characters come to mind when you think of a good relative? So feel free to write these down when you're thinking of a good positive relative, what, what characteristics do they have? What do they do? What do they say? So for me, when I think of a, a good relative, I think of somebody who's kind, somebody who's compassionate, um, 
loving, you know, so, you know, if I'm thinking about uh, a kind unchi or grandma or thinking of a kind auntie, uncle, a uh, good friend, you know, what, what does, what stands out to me about them is their positive words. So, you know, like my girl or my boy, how are you? Things like that. Um, that really make you feel loved and seen. Okay, so then how can I take those same characteristics that I see in other people, um, other relatives, and how can I be a good relative to myself? So how can I be compassionate? How can I be loving? Um, how can I be positive to myself? So again, write these down for yourself. How can you be a good relative to yourself? What can you do today, tomorrow to be a good relative to yourself? Okay, so in, in a way to be a good relative to ourself, um, self-care is, is that um, a buzzword, if you will. Um, so there are different types of self-care. There's that fall into different categories, you know, so there's physical self-care, emotional self-care, social and spiritual self-care. Um, we could also add like intellectual self-care. So there, the, these are the, are the main four areas of self-care. And then you have different activities that fall into these areas that promote overall well-being, overall wellness, overall um, positive self-care, healthy habits within these areas. So for physical we're talking about exercising, movement, um, sleeping, drinking water, eating food, healthy foods, um, those different activities that take care of your physical self. Then you have emotional self-care where you have activities like journaling, um, talking to a trusted friend or family member, um, meditation, you have a uh, prayer that definitely can go under emotional and spiritual self-care. Um, then you have social self-care. So we are social beings. We all are social creatures. We do like to be um, around other people. Uh, however, of course, we all have different levels of social batteries. Um, so doing what recharges you socially. So if that is a small group of four friends or something, or if it's a large gathering of family, you know, what recharges your social battery? What do, what do you um, enjoy? And how, how does that help your overall self-care doing those social activities that um, provide that for you? And then spiritual self-care, you know, um, sweat, anipi, uh, ceremonies, different things like that, church, you know, whatever spiritually guides you, however you see that fitting into your world, um, meditation could definitely go under that category as well. Um, prayer, journaling. Um, then we'll jump into daily habits of self-care. So, so this one highlights, and I'm going to be repeating um, certain things quite often um, that just shares how important they are and how they benefit us in many areas of our lives. So sleeping, um, the dark blue picture here has a National Sleep Foundation study for recommended hours of sleep. So for the top three areas of adults, um, age ranging from young adult to middle adult to older adult, um, it is recommended seven to nine hours a night of sleep. 
So when you when you think about that, uh, that is un, uninterrupted seven to nine hours um, where you are restfully sleeping. So to promote healthy sleep habits, excuse me, um, sleeping in a dark, cool room, you know, sleeping in comfortable clothes, um, sleep hygiene, if that is, you know, taking a shower before bedtime, or if that looks like washing your face, you know, um, being in clean, cleaner clothes while you're sleeping, that definitely promotes a better restful night's sleep. Um, also, if you're having trouble sleeping, so if you're have, having trouble sleeping, you want to keep your phone, your laptop, your computer off. You don't want any of that blue light going into your eyes two hours before bedtime. So um, that is a long time. I, I understand that. <laughs> so doing the best you can two hours before bedtime, turning off the phone, turning off the laptop, the TV. Um, so your eyes and your brain um, is not taking in that blue light because that blue light tells your brain that it's still light outside and to not go to bed because you, you need to be awake still because it's daytime. Um, so if you can't do two hours at minimum, do 30 minutes prior to bedtime. Uh, drinking water. So daily water intake is very, very important for both physical and mental. Um, here I have a picture that says 48 to 60 ounces, depending on uh, health related reasons. So, you know, for different health related reasons, you may need more, you may need less. Um, I shoot for 64 ounces personally. Um, my, I have a Fitbit, uh, that is my Fitbit goal is to have 64 ounces of water a day. Um, I get asked a lot, what does that look like? So. This bottle here, in relation to my hand, in relation to my face, um, this is 40 ounces. So if I drink all 40 ounces here at work while I'm in my office, um, then when I go home for the evening, I'll have 24 ounces of water left to drink. Um, so that is, get yourself a good size water bottle or, you know, have your favorite cup, cup that you use that's easy to keep track of your daily water intake. And then I also here have some positive affirmations. So I have them written in Lakota and in English. Um, and then the picture also depicts the same positive affirmations. So this goes back to thinking of that good relative and being that loving relative to yourself um, because we are the most critical of ourselves. We are very self-critical people. So, you know, like if we make a mistake, why did you do that? That was so dumb. You know, why, how come you did that? You, you know, different things that we tell ourselves. Um, that is negative self-talk. So then, you know, one way to combat that and one way to increase, you know, um, confidence, self-esteem, things like that is through positive affirmation. So looking at yourself in the mirror and saying these things in a believable tone, you know, like saying, I am smart, Moksape or I am powerful, Wama Shake, um, Iota Ichila, I love myself, Washtekta Ichala Iblukchaye, I think in a positive way, and Blihemiche, I gather my strength. You know, so looking at yourself, saying these things to yourself in the mirror, either to start off your day or Every time you use a bathroom, look at yourself and say these things while you're washing your hands, you know, whatever feels comfortable for you, whatever feels right to you, whatever you need to hear, because self-care is very unique to everybody. What works for me might not work for the next person and vice versa. So do what feels right for you. But also, if you're new to self-care and learning new, positive, healthy daily habits, um, it's important to practice because yes, this may feel weird looking at yourself, telling yourself these things. It may feel awkward or a little silly, um, but push through that awkwardness um, and you'll, you'll start to believe it and you'll start to feel uh, appreciation for the activity and um, overall boost your mood. 
So we will stop sharing here for a moment. And I have another meditation video for us um, at this time. And it, I am a very tactile person. I like to write things down. I like to see things visually. Um, so that is my goal is to provide a, a different and options, you know, so please follow along with, with the video here um, and, and enjoy. Hi, this is Dora. Today, we'll be trying a grounding technique to help settle your mind and body and rediscover a sense of balance whenever you need it most. No matter what's going on around you, whether you're experiencing feelings of anxiety or racing thoughts, you can always take comfort with this visualization intended to help you feel more grounded and balanced in this moment. Start by placing your feet on the floor or sitting in a comfortable position. Take a cleansing breath in and out. Closing your eyes and feeling the weight of gravity, feeling the earth supporting you. Now visualizing a strong, sturdy tree planted firmly into the ground its roots anchoring deep down into the earth and its elements, leaves drifting away in the breeze. And just like those leaves, thoughts will always come and go. Feelings will always come and go. But from this anchored point of view, we can take a step back from those thoughts and see them from what they are, rather than what we expect them to be. By acknowledging them and letting them go, we're able to create a deeper connection with the mind while staying firmly rooted in the present moment and embracing all the different aspects of our lives. You can always come back to this whenever you need to reconnect to a sense of groundedness or reconnect with your environment and surroundings. Thank you for watching. Have a healthy, happy day. All right, so that's another short option for uh, meditation. So like, like the first one, the first one focused on breathing, breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth because when we are stressed or anxious, um, have anxiety, different things like that. Um, it is easy to no longer breathe properly. Um, we do some shallow breathing where, you know, we, some sometimes we hyperventilate, different things like that. So when you're breathing, taking in long, deep breaths in through your nose and out through your mouth, um, you're able to tell your body that you're okay, you're safe, um, and, and relax. Um, and begin to bring your body and mind back to a place that is comfortable. Um, and then you also have different aspects of self-care uh, that we haven't talked about yet, but um, reading, art, beating, you know, being creative, art, coloring, painting, drawing music music is also a very huge beneficial way to um care for yourself and do things that you enjoy um planting so horticulture you know gardening that is also very fulfilling and a very positive well-being self-care step um what else do we have? Yoga, um, different different things like that. And doing what interests you for self-care, but also feels right 
Um, you know, so like if that is taking a long hot shower or a bath um, and relaxing, I know the, there's a buzzword of self care and you're like doing your nails and going shopping and different things like that. But self care is definitely things we've talked about already. You know, it's those daily habits of caring for ourselves. Um, so one example I like to share with individuals that I talk with is someday self-care looks like, like taking a shower and combing out my hair. Um, my hair is in a bun, but my hair does go um, like mid-thigh. I'm not tall, but I'm not I'm not that short either. Um, so my hair is very long, so it is a, a, ch a chore to comb out. Um, so some days on, on the weekends, you know, self-care looks like not combing my hair just because it is a, a tedious um, task. But so, you know, doing what is right for, for you in terms of self-care and practicing, you know, what, what does trying something new takes time, um, you know, so meditation, yoga if if you're new to those activities it's going to take time to to truly um get the benefits like even the positive self talk it's going to take time to, for that to feel comfortable and for it to feel right um you know playing with the words what what feels right and what sounds right to you um it, it is all a unique process and feel free to change it and adapt it to what you are comfortable with and what you you know yourself best and you know what you need. Um, we'll go back over to the presentation. Okay, so ways to reduce stress. Again, these overlap, they're very important. Um, so accepting your needs. What do you need? Um, and in stressful times, it is good to take a step back and be like, okay, well, what do I need? I, I am stressed, what do I need? Do I need, did I eat this morning? Do I need to eat? Did I get enough water? Um, do I need, a, do I need a nap? Do I need to prioritize bedtime tonight when I go home? You know, accepting your needs. Um, mental health days. That was a great way to accept your, accept your need. Um, manage your time. So being organized and managing your time uh, in stressful situations, um, at work, for school, what you know, whatever you got going on, um, managing your time. There's an activity called a time study where you write down all of the activities that you do in a day that you have to do, that you're required to do, that you want to do, um, starting with wake, waking up. What time do you wake up? What time do you shower? What time do you cook breakfast? What, uh, you know, how long does it take you to get ready? Different things like that. Um, you know, do you have children you got to attend to and fit in your schedule? Do you have um, other obligations that need to go in there, work and school and different different things? You know, what, what goes on in your time study? Um, and then from there, after you complete it and you write down everything you do from hour to hour, minute to minute, exactly what happens within your day. Um, you start finding holes where you can um, best execute your your best self, you know. So what are you hoping to fit into your schedule? Do you need to fit time in there to study, to do homework? What, is, what does that look like? How can you weave those things in? Maybe you, after you did your time study, you found out that you're ex um, spending more time on social media than you had thought. And, you know, there's two hours or more there that, you know, you can be doing something else or you would like to incorporate something else in there. Um, maybe you're not willing to cut back your social media time. Maybe you, maybe that is appropriate. Maybe you are spending just 30 minutes on social media, whatever that looks like and how maybe how you can reward yourself with, okay, well, if I study for uh, 15, 20 minutes straight, I will reward myself with uh, five minutes of social media time. And then setting timers for both can definitely help you manage your time and keep you on track. Um, exercise, 
of course, we, we talked about that already, that that helps with re releasing endorphins and getting the blood flow going. Um, it, you know, if you're stuck on a, a problem or stuck at a project at work, um, taking a short 15, 20 minute walk, brisk walk, you know, where you're walking fast enough where your heart is beating and you're able to talk, but it's just a little bit, a little bit difficult. Um, that is a good pace to go at. That is a good, good way to, to get the, the chemical change in your brain to start making it function differently again. And then you're going to be able to be more creative when you come back to your workspace. Um, most important one in my eyes is setting aside time for yourself. So the whole idea of self-care, set, set aside time for yourself to do something that recharges your battery, that you truly want to do, that you that brings you joy. Um, you know, what, is, what does that look like? If, if that is making sure you get up 15 minutes before everybody else in the house so you can have 15 minutes of quiet time or alone time to eat your your breakfast um, to recharge yourself, whatever that looks like. I I know for my mom, um, she she wakes up very early. She she likes she likes that quiet time in the morning to just herself to make sure her day starts off good. And if somebody else's schedule con conflicts with her schedule, and somebody else is awake when they're not typically awake at that time, it kind of throws her day off. Um, yeah, so making sure you set aside time for yourself. You know, maybe maybe it's going on a walk, uh, a bath, eating well. So that's a that's another good one. Um, eating well does play a huge role in how we feel. Um, you know, so if we're eating excessive amounts of sugar, energy drinks, that is definitely gonna play into how we feel overall. Um, so make sure you eat well when you can. Um, I, I say when you can because I know how it, it expensive fruit and vegetables are. So eating well while you can is a, is a good rule to, to go by. Get enough sleep. Avoid drugs and alcohol. So this is a, another important one. Um, when we use drugs or alcohol to cope with problems in our lives, um, they're not fixing um, our problems are we're not we're not facing our challenges head on we 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 kind of procrastinate the process if you will um, so it is a good idea to to develop some healthy habits some good self-care practices where you're using those to cope with daily life stressors versus um, alcohol and drugs and then, of course, talk to somebody. So talk to a trusted friend or family member um, or talk to a professional. Um, those are all great ways to reduce stress, but also um, to keep up with the self-care. Okay. Now, feel free to write this one down again. You know, what, what new ways will you try to be a good relative to yourself? So from what we discussed today, um, this might have been new information. This might have been a reminder. Um, you know, maybe you are doing some of the activities I already discussed. Maybe you're doing different ones that are working well for you. Um, so what, what new ways or what continued ways are you going to be a good relative to yourself today, tomorrow, this week. So, so write that down. How, how will you be a good relative to yourself today? And then if you feel comfortable sharing with the group, feel free to put it in the chat how you will be a good relative to yourself today. Um, and then if you have any questions for me as well, feel free to unmute or ask in the chat. Um, if you have any questions, if you want to see any of the information I shared today, again, more than happy to go back. 
great breathing and self-talk, positive affirmations, awesome. So I, journaling and self-reflection, great. So I had the, the last session or the morning session, the AM session, uh, had an individual ask about resources, um, finding counseling for themselves or others um, and how to go about that. Um, I, I think it was a great question. So I'll, I'll repeat my answer here. Um, when, when you're looking for your own counselor, therapist, um, be picky, shop around, um, especially if you're paying for the service um, or your insurance is paying for the service. It's okay to be picky. It's okay to shop around. It's okay to, 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 to find who, who matches you, you know, what, what you're looking for in the counseling process. Um, and then they... I also shared with them a newsletter where they they send out morning or Monday Monday morning and Wednesday morning newsletters and it's called Wondermind. If you go to wondermind.com and sign up with your email, um, they will send you those emails Monday and Wednesday. They highlight different mental health related topics. They talk about news and mental health. They have um, articles and interviews with people about mental health. Um, it's, a, it's a great reminder to spend some time focusing on and growing in a positive way, um, your overall mental health, self-care, different things like that. So that is definitely a good resource to check out. Um, does anybody have any questions? Feel free to put them in the chat. I do have another resource I can share with you all as well. Um, and this one is um, just some positive steps to well-being. Definitely stuff we, we already talked about, but um, like I said, I am a tactile person. I like to see things. So this is just another way to see it, another presentation of what what that would look like, um, incorporating some of these healthy habits into your daily life. Awesome. So yeah, um, if you don't have any questions, um, that is what I had prepared for the day. Um, if anybody wants to hang out and ask questions or wants to see something again, I will be here for the remaining um, time. But if not, then I guess you're you're free to go as 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 you will to other other sections or follow the agenda. However, however you see fit. Thank you all for, for attending and participating.